Welcome to Grand. Grand's about three families going about their lives. Janice Bassetti lives in a trailer with her daughter, Etta. They're going through a tough time. I came back to ask you for a divorce. Tom Smithson moved to Grand with his wife, Carol Ann, for a job at the Weldon Piano Works. So far, it's not great. Get out, you're fired! Harrison Weldon earned a fortune, but his son is worthless. Well, at least he's not in a tower with a rifle. No, that would mean climbing stairs. It's Grand. Good things are coming our way, honey. I can feel it. Oh, get real. I can't, Carol Ann. I gotta release this energy. <laughs> hey, Edda, get up. It's gorgeous out there. I just jogged around the lake. Mm. I saw a deer. <coughs> Come on, get up. You're going to be late for school. What happened here last night? I had a snack. You ate our Easter ham. It's not like I ate it. It just entered my body. Etta, honey, I know what's going on. What? You're feeling real sad about the divorce. What divorce? Daddy's of mine, your parents. Mom, Daddy left us three years ago. Now he wants a divorce. Big deal. Who cares? No, 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 no. Oh, oh come on, sweetie pie. Come on now. No, you gotta look on the bright side of things. Why? Why? Because we're survivors. No, we're winners. Where do the losers live? In a mailbox? <laughs> We're not losers, Etta. It's just we didn't know if your dad was coming back. And then I had to clean houses temporarily. But hey, now we know. He's not coming back. I clean houses for sure. <laughs> Mom, you're being cheerful. It's depressing. Give it up. <laughs> okay, look. I wasn't going to tell you until I knew for sure, but I've got a meeting with Mr. Weldon today. I wrote him a letter asking if I could clean all the offices at the piano works. Ooh, can I touch you? <laughs> no, but I might touch you. Now listen, little girl, we're at a big crossroads in our life. We can choose to be happy or we can choose to be sad. I choose to be happy. How about you? Etta! Etta! Okay, stay there. Breathe lint. I... I am gonna do something positive with my life. Very special segment today. Men who have done rotten things to women and the women they have done them to. <laughs> For softness that's gentle on baby skin, try Fluffy's. New Fluffy's features the clown face crotch. When his nose turns red, you know your baby's wet. I don't know. <laughs> I'd sleep with me. <laughs> We're back. Meet Cheryl Ann. Her husband began his affair when they had been married less than a year. Tell us, Cheryl Ann, what were the signs? Well, um, the big one was... Uh, he, he no longer wanted to have um, 
sex? With me. He started jogging three hours a day. He always came back with a big smile on his face. <laughs> to cover, he'd call me by my pet name. How's it going, Hamster? Fine. <laughs> He'd shower off her perfume faster than you could say adultery. He'd always sing. Every time you move your hips, I want to chew your lips. Come out here now, Tom! On the state was confronting him. He, he admitted he loved her, dried off and left. What is it? Um, nothing. Just, just wanted to talk. Huh. So... You doing anything today? Yes. I'm going to go down to the piano works. I know I can convince your uncle to give me my job back. Oh, really? Is that all you're doing, Tom? Yeah, I thought I'd try and provide us with a future in which we can afford to eat. Oh. <laughs> I'm getting kind of cold standing oh, here. Oh, well. You go shower. You provide her you. <laughs> Tom, let's eat soon, all right? We'll, we'll have a picnic. After you go see Uncle Weldon today, we can... Drive down to the river and feed each other deviled eggs. Sounds great, Hamster. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Next, we'll meet a woman whose husband used his workplace as a sordid love nest. When we return, sex at the office. <laughs> <laughs> The enchanting Beryl Gates. Desmond, I told you to find a young, vital woman to accompany me to Carnegie Hall. The young, vital Myrna Hofstetter. <laughs> Younger Desmond. Just exactly what are we talking about? Optimally. An elegant 19-year-old. That's pathetic. Oh, George Hamilton gets all the young ones. He's about my age. Oh, please. Oh, Desmond, this is the proudest moment of my life. I have no one gorgeous to share it with. You have a meeting today with Janice Persetti. What about her? Janice? Hmm. On stage, Lenny Bernstein playing the 100,000th Weldon piano. The audience, black tie. Seated in the presidential box, the first lady, the president, my cleaning lady, and me. No. She's a hard worker, sir. Ordinarily, I like that in a date. Tom Smithson is here. I was just in the neighborhood, sir. I'm in a meeting. I'll tell him, sir. Mr. Weldon is in a meeting all day and cannot be disturbed. I'll wait. He says he'll wait. I wouldn't wait, Tom. Well, it's not like I have a lot of choices, Desmond. Grand is a one-industry town. Weldon's the industry. I moved here to work. I have a lot of people depending on me. A wife? <laughs> A lot of other people depending on me. There has to be a way to get to him, Desmond. I need this job. I know how I got my job. I took a bullet for him at Normandy. Um, I'm here to see Mr. Weldon. Oh, Miss Bassetti, he's been waiting to see you. Right this way, Janice. I think Mr. Weldon has some good news for you. Really? Hi, Tom. <laughs> Because he doesn't like you. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Weldon. You won't be sorry. Mr. Weldon. Mr. Mr. Weldon. Mr. Weldon. Uh, <laughs> Dennis. Oh. What happened? You weren't even in there a minute. I know. I got a contract to clean all the offices at Weldon Piano, and he gave me an advance for supplies. <laughs> really? Janice, I need to talk to you. How did you get through to Weldon? I'll buy you lunch. <laughs> Janice, I'm not asking for much. Just a few minutes of your time now. I need to make it. If I don't make it soon, I'm gonna die. <laughs> Well, I'm sorry, Tom, but I gotta get to Sears. <laughs> Carol Ann, how's it going? <laughs> Tell me, Colleen. 
What are his hobbies? When's his birthday? Tell me or I'll staple my hand. I swear I will. Hi, Colleen. Well, you got your haircut. It's lower. Is my dad in? What do you want? Well, immortality. But I'll settle for a video camera and a small plane. The weekend's coming up. You're, you're Mr. Weldon's son? You're, you're Norris. Your cousin Norris. Yeah, who are you? And Tom Smithson. Oh. I married Carol Ann. Oh, Carol Ann. Yeah, yeah I, I just saw her. Someplace. <laughs> yeah, she looks great. Well, well hey, so do you. <laughs> Let me buy you lunch. Hmm, am I hungry or do I want a plane? A plane, sorry. Uh, well, how about dinner then? Okay. Your house? Why not? Eight o'clock. <laughs> sure. <laughs> Thanks for the invitation. Hey, we're family. <laughs> Nice guy. depressed. It's about time. <laughs> okay, we don't want to be depressed for the next six months or year or five, ten years, whatever. So we're just going to get it all out of our system tonight. All right. All right. But first, we've got to set some rules. Now, when I say begin, we can start feeling real sorry for ourselves. We can whine. We can bawl. Can we say insensitive things? <laughs> Nothing with mother in it. But when this timer goes off, we pick ourselves back up, and we start looking on the bright side of things. OK? OK. OK. Ready? Begin. As long as we got the timer set, shouldn't we bake something? No. Atta concentrate. Come on, come on, come on. Well, this is it, hamster. This is our shot. Tonight, I'm going to make your uncle like us. Well, he already likes you, so we're halfway there. You know, it's 10 to 8. Why don't you put some color in that face? Maybe a little lipstick? Is everything okay, Carol Ann? Are you, uh, are you pre-something? Are you post-something? Is that blouse inside out? Doesn't matter. All that matters tonight is that we are a team. Carol Ann? More wine, Carol Ann. <laughs> yes, please. You all right down there, Cousin Tom? Y yes. <laughs> I was just uh, commenting to Carol Ann about the wine. Very good. Is this the one we brought? It's a 61 Lafitte Rothschild, sir. Yeah, hey, you're only off by about 30 years. An ocean and about 300 bucks, huh? <laughs> <laughs> Don't you ever feel guilty drinking this, knowing there are poor people out there who could use this wine a lot more than we? Do you have any bigger glasses? Well, I don't remember you drinking this much. S -s -s sir, sir, yeah. if, if I may. Um, I think Carol Ann might be reacting to the pressure we've been under since we moved to Grand, and you and I had that little misunderstanding. You walked into my office, told me I should stop making pianos, and I fired you. It was one of my moments of greatest clarity. <laughs> well, sir, I sensed that. I sensed that so deeply, in fact, that I almost gave up my dream of ever working for you. Until I saw what you did today for a little gal named Janice Pacetti. You know Janice? <laughs> 
Sir, <laughs> funny. When she came out of your office today, she, she grabbed me, you know. She said, don't give up on Mr. Weldon, Tom. When he sees the kind of man you are inside, he'll just have to love and respect you as much as I do. Janice said that? She did. Janice was always an original thinker. You know, she was the first one to stop wearing a bra. Oh, well, isn't that a surprise? Janice is very, very special. Carol Ann, could you pass the butter, please? <laughs> Thank you, darling. I miss our house. I miss our yard. I miss my room. I miss my bathtub. I miss my dog. You never had a dog. I know. Isn't that sad? Yeah. But you know what I miss the most? What? I miss my dad. Well, Etta, we got to face it. He's gone. He's living in New York with a psychologist. <laughs> psychologist. He never wanted me to work. He never even wanted me to read in bed. He used to say to me, when you get in that bed, you... No, never mind what he said. You know, I bet that psychologist has a daughter who's really cute and popular and thin. I hate her. <laughs> starting to rain. It's probably acid rain. It'll probably dissolve our trailer. I bet the shrink has a real house. Well, whatever she has, she's got what it takes, and I obviously don't. What is it about Janice? And she has a unique quality. I know what you mean. How would you describe it? She was a slut. <laughs> Maybe it's Janice's very dry wit. Janice's very tight butt. Huh? I think Janice looks like Michelle Pfeiffer. You know, I thought that myself when I saw her in Married to the Mob. It's the cheekbones. You know, Tom used to tell me I looked like Loretta Swift. <laughs> you know, the thing about Janice, may I join you? Oh, please. <laughs> See, Janice, Janice knows what's important in life. Now, sometimes I... You, we, get off track. We forget that we're here to do a good day's work, earn an honest wage, and then come home to a loving family. Tom. Tommy. <laughs> I never thought I'd say this, but my niece may not have made such a bad choice after all. Well, sir, I, I know that I couldn't have made a better choice than my little hamster here. But how come you're having sex with Janice? Carol Ann! Uh, this is a complete surprise to me, sir. Carol Ann? Pick your hands off me. I'm leaving. Well, I'll drive you. Oh, Could you believe that? Dinner is over, Mr. Smithson. But I didn't do anything. I would never cheat on my wife. Desmond? I'm just going to tidy up. It's not a moral judgment. <laughs> so... How was she? <laughs> I sent my picture of that boy in Cambodia, drug luck. He sent it back and said I was fat. <laughs> the only man I ever loved walked out on me. I'm nothing at a goose egg. Zip. Zero. Five more minutes. Time's up. <laughs> Sorry. You made the rules. Okay. All right. How do you feel? What a great night. Thanks, Mom. <laughs> you know, Edda? I've made a lot of mistakes. But the one thing I did right was have you. And I'm going to try not to mess up. So, uh... You should have this. 
He may not be my husband, but he'll always be your dad. <laughs> I wish you hadn't drawn that knife through his head. <laughs> no, I, I just did it on the glass. It comes right off, see? After these messages. Your ginseng tea, sir. Oh, Desmond, listen to this. Darling, as I think of you tonight, I realize how my infidelities during our marriage must have cost you tremendous pain and suffering. From the bottom of my heart, I beg your forgiveness. That's a beautiful sentiment, sir. Which wife shall I send it to? Xerox eight copies. Send it to all of them. Mom? Yeah? I'm tired. Can I turn out the lights? Sure, hon. Good night. Good night. Uh. Carol Ann. Oh, sweetheart. Kuzak jousts with a British barrister in the case of the conniving Candyman on an all-new L.A. law. And Friday night, escape to Baywatch, True Blue, and Mancuso FBI. On the next grand, will Tom win Carol Ann back? What do I have to do to convince you that I'm not cheating? Throw me down on the floor right now and impregnate me. Will Janice give in to her urges? Go! Will Norris think? I'm going to host my own TV show on Channel 128. Those answers and more. There's a reason to stay home and watch TV again. Next Thursday on Grand.